250 students who topped the 2011 Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education joined the Equity Bank's University Leadership and Mentorship Program. The scholars have been admitted to leading universities in Kenya with 21 securing scholarships to universities abroad. Here is a selection of six of the scholars. Albert Kamau Wandui was launched into the limelight in 2011 when he emerged Kenya's top student in the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education KCSE exams. A year before sitting the national exams, at Moi High School Kabarak where he was the school head boy, Albert exuded confidence that he would pass well and gain admission to Ivy League schools like Harvard, Yale and Stanford. Albert's ambition was ignited by a fellow student Anthony Siloi, who had studied in the same school, emerging the best in the district. Siloi joined the Equity Bank Leadership and Mentorship Program, after which he applied and qualified for scholarship to Harvard University. He was the kind of person that he would try to look at from afar, you would observe his character, and he had a really outstanding character. He was really hardworking. He also joined Equity Bank's Leadership and Mentorship Program that admits the top girl and top boy in every district the bank operates. The greatest lesson that I learned from my, my time at Equity is, is the value of the choices that I made. Because every day from the time I, I, I started in the morning to the evening when I was closing up, I'd have to make so many choices. You know, sometimes you have to choose whether you're going to serve a customer, how much you're going to serve. You know that it, it really cultivated this sense of, of of responsibility as a person because you know you, you feel like you've been given a domain you're responsible for. This is my cubicle. This is my box. This is this is what I'm doing. Uh, there's no one else who's going to be accountable for it. It's it's, it's, it's only me. So I think over, over the time I spent there, I really felt that I had to be more responsible than I was before. At Equity Bank, he was encouraged to follow his dream of joining world's leading universities. He applied and gained admission to Stanford University where he hopes to pursue a course in electronic engineering. I've been fascinated about all those things all along and I feel it's a good environment to interact with even more people and see um, and, and get the exposure in the field because it's, it's in Silicon Valley and it's one of the most technologically advanced places in the, in, the, in the world. The greatest expectations are from the Moi High School Kabarak fraternity where hundreds of continuing students are looking up to Albert for inspiration to also scale the heights of academic prowess and leadership. Because of his composure, because of his hard work, uh, he was chosen to be the school's head boy and he did not disappoint us. Uh, he did his work very well and he set a very high standard for the prefects body in the school. In the year 2010, um, Albert Wandoi um, participated in uh, the Pan-African Mathematics Olympiad. Uh, that's a continental mathematics contest. And uh, Kenya sent uh, five uh, students to represent the country in Cote d'Ivoire in, in that year. And Albert was among the five. Uh, sent to represent the continent, um, the country in, in, in every coast. And um, Albert again emerged the best of the Kenyan team. For us, it is a great like a responsibility that we have to surpass what he did so that we not only make ourselves relevant to the society but also the school at large. I think it's really encouraging and it's a motivating factor for all the students in the school because you know that what we get here is sufficient that in, and it can take us to those heights. It is the voice from the future. I love in the BBK, while in Saray Girls, I knew I had the green card to work hard and discard the notion that a woman cannot become the best physicist in the world. Lavender Birike is talented. Her unique way with words has endeared her to many, landing her opportunities to make presentations at auspicious occasions. In early 2013, Lavender was the choral vast lead soloist at the Wings to Fly Education Program Commissioning, officiated by the then President of Kenya, Mwai Kibaki. In 2030, 
I will have built this nation. This is my confirmation, my declaration. Lavender faced many challenges throughout her childhood and youth. She attributes her view of life to the hardship she faced growing up. Most of my poems, I speak about my experiences in life, the things I learn in life, the things I yearn for in life. And uh, I find poetry a good way of communicating to the society because it makes an, an impact. Lavender worked hard and managed to secure a scholarship at Starehe Girls Center. After four years at the school, she excelled in the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education exams, leaving an enduring legacy that many continuing students aspire to emulate. I will now be joining Cambridge University this year to pursue natural sciences. With the skills that I will gain from the natural sciences, particularly physics, I will be able to indulge myself in scientific facts and scientific inventions within my country, Kenya, that will move that will move us to the next step towards Vision 2030. On the day of her departure, her family escorted her to Nairobi, 500 kilometers from her hometown of Busia, situated at the border point with Uganda. We are excited and we are happy that she's going to learn. Our joy is that the Lord should be with her and keep her well and safe. I know she's good at what she wants to achieve. And I know she's just going to do it and make it. Come back with a degree, head on to work. Late afternoon in this homestead to Yugi's township, a mother's pride is evident. From trophies donning her living room table to newspaper cuttings, preserved as reminder of her son's achievements, Purity Frida Olonde reminisces the great moments of joy as the mother of winner of Best Actors Award during the Kenyan National Schools Drama Festivals in 2007. I must thank the Almighty God for what, he, what Rocky is today. Now a fourth-year student at the University of Nairobi, her son Rocky Olonde is the pride of the family. Their rural home is testimony of the fruits of determination and focus. Rocky is a hard work. I can say I have electricity because of Rocky. And he's here to actually complete school. He's the type of guy who tells you, Mom, nita kufanya hii. Mami vumilia tu, nikidogo tu. When he went to equity, Rocky is the one who boosted my business. Rocky's academic prowess started showing at a young age. I saw a great potential in him, so I had to give him a scholarship. He's one student who was very meticulous, and he did us proud by getting the highest marks that have never been achieved in the school, 455 in 2003. The interesting bit and probably the, the thing worth noting about my educational life is that when I got to class four my father was retrenched and so I, I had this life where basically I did not know where my next fees was going to come from and I did not know how I was going to finance my education and so on. But then uh, thanks to well wishes I had my education financed throughout from class four. When I, when I was in class six the principal of uh, the headmaster of Uggis Highlands Academy took me up offered me a scholarship and uh, the scholarship was actually a very interesting one. All I had to do was pass my exams and then he would sponsor the rest of my brothers and sisters. While not in class at the university where he studies, the young man exploits his communication talent on television. Rocky's knowledge of top flight football earned him a contract at KISS TV where he hosts sports analysis with impeccable aptitude. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, this is Soccer Central and I am your host Rocky Londe. When I joined campus, I tried so hard to get a job as, uh, as an analyst because I used to love seeing what the analysts do. I love my job, I love what I do. I would tell my friends what I do as a football analyst is like being paid to eat. You do what you love and you get, you get paid. Back in the Yugis, the family can now enjoy Titan. time in front of the TV set as they but await FC their North favorite North. football program hosted by their son. Rocky, Rocky is a good, it's a good role model, not only, not only me but to others. He also inspires me a lot in school and in everywhere. 
what inspires me is that motivation, that spark to always succeed in what I do. I have passion for everything I strive to do and I never want to fail. So that's all that inspires me. His dream is to see other young scholars excel with the hope of transforming their lives and that of the society. Diana Mungare is an environmentalist par excellence. Her encounter with environmental degradation started at an early age at a suburb of Nakuru town. Her main concern was the carefree dumping of household garbage that piled up near her home. Time, I was able to level this down and also put the signs of no dumping around here so less people could throw their waste around here. Then afterwards, because I'm sure people didn't have ways of removing their waste from here, they'd go and still pour further down to the other areas. But hopefully with time, they're going to um, get the culture of um, garbage collection and also recycling that you can enable them to reduce the disposal of waste in this area. The dumping in the estate fades into obscurity when compared with the dump site near London Estate. Here pigs wallow in fields that is constantly replenished by garbage creating an eyesore that overlooks the scenic beauty of Lake Nakuru in the far south. Waste disposal is a very big problem in Nakuru town and this is the same thing that happens actually in the estates because there isn't a system of garbage collection and recycling. People um, um, through the waste next to the houses or just around their homes and for people who get their waste carried by trucks all the waste is brought here. It has uh, made an impact uh, starting right from here. We have expanded to our neighborhood and from our neighborhood to almost the whole area where we live in and we are seeing positive impact. So I thank God for having uh, given her that knowledge and courage to take up uh, such tasks. Through education to the people around me and even in other residential areas and throughout the town, I'm sure people will be more aware of environmental conservation and environmental awareness. And through that, they can be able to also organize themselves in smaller groups to collect, um, to collect their waste in a more organized manner. For Diana, the dam sites near home provided her with an opportunity to practice her knowledge on environmental management. Her care for the surroundings zeroed down to waste value as a business opportunity. She founded a garbage collection company at 18 years of age to win a Young Entrepreneur's Award. Her business concept, Planet Green, bagged her the first runners-up award at the 2012 Anzisha Prize Awards held in South Africa. In mid-April, Diana was invited to Washington, D.C. by the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars to discuss the topic, Women and Youth as Drivers of Change Through Technology and Social Innovation. She has been admitted to Pennsylvania, where she hopes to continue her pursuit of a cleaner environment that she hopes will result in enactment of a waste management policy. I hope to link up the, the knowledge I get through the international studies in terms of public policy, so um, what I learned about making sound policies that can be used in the government, I can be able to um, employ what I learn in the environmental sector in Kenya. For many students from needy families, education is seen as a means out of the groups of poverty. One such student is Laban Mwangi. He lost his father at a tender age of 13 and faced many difficulties in school. As, as the elder son in a family of, uh, of seven, he had to take the responsibility of others as our mom went uh, out to, to fight for our basic needs. <laughs> No mwari mwako na todo ni mudu mugere akamwita agacoka shukuru kana rege gaheyo basari to raise school fees he would repair electronic gadgets in the evening and during weekends i learned that one from my dad i just looked at what he was doing and then that one i mastered the full concept during school holidays laban would work at tea farms and save for the following terms school fees 
he promised that once offered a chance, he would pay back, back the school fees uh, through joining Equity Group Foundation. And uh, I was really amused, let me say so, because I never thought anybody would come promising that he would pay fees in the future, not, and not the way we are used to. Mwangi lived up to his promise. He worked extra hard and at the end of the year, he emerged the top student in Kangema district. And that was like the turning point of my life. To the surprise of many, he opted to go back to his former school as a full-time mentor and teacher under the Equity Centers of Excellence initiative that places 30 equity scholars in three rural and marginalized schools to help them improve their academic performance. Through the initiative, Mwangi gained hands-on exposure and training in solving academic inequality. His efforts finally paid off when he won the Mastercard Foundation scholarship to join University of Toronto in Canada. Whatever we use in Kenya as electronic, BH, lead use BH watches. If, we, for instance, we, we can partner with the engineers in Kenya, I think it is, it is, it is possible to have uh, some of these things being made in Kenya. For family, friends, teachers and students of Musingu High School in Kakamega County, Elsa lives in wall paintings and in living room hangings. He's now a a common thing in this school because when you walk everywhere you see his name because of the art he does. The first year University of Nairobi student of fine art has his eyes set on making it big as an artist. For the school community here, El Saad lives among them. His name appears boldly wherever there's a painting or a drawing on the wall. Behind me you can see the human eye and the parts have been labelled and this is an initiative from the art class where Elsa was a student and they came up with that drawing to assist other learners to grasp better the human eye. I could see that he was a promising child because right from class one he was always number one, he was always topping his class. His performance in art, uh, less art uh, subject was wonderful. One of the things I've always told Elsa is if there are five oranges on the table, you must struggle to pick the first orange. Because if you do not pick the first orange and the first person picks five oranges, then you have no, no chance of picking an orange. And I think that has made him, uh, it makes him work hard. I always tell him, in everything that you do, make sure that you excel. Elsad's star as an artist is shining. At the Department of Architecture, Arts and Design at the University of Nairobi, the student occupies his time drawing and designing projects for his technical papers. I'm, I'm currently working on my 2D assignment. I'm trying to draw them on a Lisa in terms of just trying to check whether I can get the elements and principles of design from the same. Elsad's passion for art recently won him a trip to the United Kingdom after he emerged tops in a drawing competition dubbed Experiencing Kenyan Heritage Through Art. A technologist at the Department of Art at the University of Nairobi explains that students are free to find their footing in a competitive and changing global environment even where art is not considered a prestigious career. From the School of Art and Design, I have been assisting him and I know him. He's a talented uh, gentleman. This typography lab at the department is Elsa's second home. In here, he is exposed to drawing technology from ancient printing press machines to freehand drawing expressions. One of the best celebrated artists is called Pablo Picasso. I've told my son about him. This guy is just an artist. But you go and look for his art in any exhibition, it should be going for about 10 million US dollars in one time. So I. I can tell parents, whatever your child does, let the child do it, but do it exceptionally well. With scholars like Elsa, the future of Kenya's fine art, including painting, 
sculpture, music and poetry, and theater and dance is assured. Albert, Lavender, Rocky, Diana, Elsart, and Laban are but a few scholars pursuing various courses locally and abroad after going through the Equity Group Foundation Mentorship and Leadership Program. They had emerged tops in the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education KCSE exams to qualify for the program that admits the best boy and best girl in each district where Equity Bank has a branch.